This is called uh, Punta Lobos. Uh, Lobos because of the wolves, if you will, but really it's the, it's the sea lions and the bark of which, of course, sounds like a wolf and hence Punta Lobos. The town of Todos Santos is off that way, maybe uh, two, two miles away. Come down the highway a little bit and then on to a dirt road that brings us probably the last mile into the Fisherman's Beach, as this is universally called. This is where the fishermen, as you can see, uh, start their day. They uh, get a truck, it's got a big bumper, and they put it up against the back end of the panga, the fishing boat. They push it over to the edge and they just get it at the brink before it it's ready to drop into the ocean. A bunch of guys get behind the first boat and they push it down to the ocean with a yellow uh, line stretching back out the back of it. And it goes through the waves and kind of gets out there, this line being fed out. And then it just hovers there and waits, engine running. They take the line and they hook it then to the front of the next panga here. And they get that guy poised at the top of the hill and ready, set, go. They shove him down at, at the signal and the guy in the boat guns it and takes it and pulls the next guy out through the through the surf and off and then he drops his line and the guy who's just been sent out has a line to the back of his which is in turn hooked to the next guy the next day and hence the nature of a cooperative that uh, that all Mexican fishermen certainly here anyway uh, are members of and so one after another they help one another get out through the surf and off uh, for a day's fishing and what we're doing now is we're waiting for them to return. It's about, oh, 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Another 10 minutes, we should have another boat coming back in. And that's even more fun. I won't spoil it for you. You can, uh, you can watch it as they come back in. Uh, Then they take the, uh, the fish from here and they take most of them and they put them in a freezer truck here or an ice truck here, take them over to La Paz where they're taken off to the mainland because there are a lot of great restaurants and what have you in, in, uh, in Todos Santos. But um, the commercial aspect of it has a magnitude because they can uh, go across the 40 miles or so to La Paz and from there uh, by boat to the mainland. What I think is kind of fun is that in the foreground is this little lake, it's called a poza in, in uh, Spanish, and it reflects that there is water that comes down and then over the course of the year, the water comes down in here and then is held there just by the sand. And some of it leaches through gradually and kind of goes out into the ocean. But there are ponds like this up and down the, the California coast. There's one just, uh, in Todos Santos itself, it just flows to the ocean. So they grew lots of sugarcane with the water that they had here. So the Todos Santos Writers Workshop has had as its headquarters Casa Dracula, this wonderful, historic, red brick, two-story, handsome edifice. It was built in the 1850s, uh, active in the sugar industry, and used as a warehouse and for other uh, um, farming industrial, if, if you will, purposes to convert the, the sugar cane into the sugar that we're going to see how it was shipped out of here. Anyway, so Casa Dracula, long history as, as part of the sugar trade. They would cut the sugar cane, they would bring it to a mill, they would put it through the press that was the mill such as to crush it, and the sugar water would come out of the sugar cane, build a fire, and they, that fire would then dry the molasses until it was solid. They'd pack that in blocks and then cart them by the road we're about to hike up to the ship's harbor. And ships would come from San Francisco, from the mainland. This road here we're gonna follow goes up, swoops up across that ridge line. You can see it cutting across the mountain up there to the saddle that's there. And this is where the sugar blocks were taken. 
and then drop down into the harbor, which we're going to have a look at the other side. <laughs> I'm supposed to, be, supposed to be smiling. No evidence of being winded. This is the ecosystem in which we find ourselves where, you know, it doesn't rain for 11 months. These guys have all figured out a way to survive in the midst of it. What's wonderful here is that when you do get a rain, all of a sudden the desert just turns green. And for that short period of time, bushes, small plants just blossom. It's just uh, spectacular. Pretty cool. This is the Sierra de la Laguna, the highest peak of which is 7,000 feet, called La Laguna because there's a big flat area, it looks like it was a lake. So when this was formed, it was flush up against what is now the mainland of Mexico. And the Sea of Cortez is the San Andreas Fault. And it's getting wider and wider and wider as it pulls away and deeper and deeper. And uh, so it's against the, the Sierra de Laguna that the, the weather hits, drops into the Artesian Basin, that then comes out in Todos Santos, which you see there. And you can see, you know, as the coast goes up, there are projections that come out and out. And each of those, it creates surf breaks, waves that, that break and then extend themselves southward from there so that you can go surfing there. What do you say, Pop? Huh? Yeah, let's go. Here we go. Come on. This is the harbor, and uh, in the times of the, of the sugar cane, they would follow this road that we've been on that then cuts back in and circles down and then comes back into this rock wall that's there. And because the swells come into this, into this harbor, the boat would be going up and down, but just held offshore by those ropes. They had, they'd have a chute then went from that, um, that rock works down to the boat and they would take the sugar cane blocks and slide them down into the hole of the ship. So this is the, uh, this is the old harbor of, for Todos Santos. And if you go out this way, at the end of that point and, and off to the north a little bit is where the sea lions are. And when you get out there, you can just hear them barking and see them frolicking down in the coves and, and crannies of the, uh, of the ocean. You know, one of the things that's wonderful here, because you get the expanse of the ocean, is that you get the real sense of the curvature of the earth. You know, you can just see how it gradually slopes away to the left and the right. You see how big the ball is on which we're spinning. 900 miles an hour going in that direction, going around the, traveling around the sun, another 1900 miles an hour or some such, spinning around in our galaxy about 94,000 miles an hour, never to come back to this spot in the great universe again. <laughs> but here we are, Dodo Santos, 
nice place to have picked for today.